Well, thank you very much uh, to uh, Nestle Health Science for the invitation to participate in this important symposium, and thank you for being here uh, during your lunch hour to uh, participate as well. I'm a metabolic physiologist, so I'm a basic scientist interacting with the clinicians in our research center in Sherbrooke, which is just east of Montreal and just north of Boston to orient you a little bit in the uh, countryside where the maple trees grow and are changing in colors now that it's autumn. And I want to talk to you about brain energy metabolism um, and the tools that we've developed to um, assess brain energy metabolism and the role of ketones in that process. Ketones are not a conventional nutrient, but I want to uh, try to show you that they have an, a significant role in the nutritional status of the brain and potentially for cognitive outcomes uh, in, in the elderly. These are my disclosures. So by way of background to MCI, or mild cognitive impairment, I'd like to put the metabolic issue on the map because we've understood Alzheimer's disease in terms of its pathology for many, many years. But I think there's been uh, a little success so far in treating the, uh, the pathological aspects of the disease. And I'd like to, like, is my cursor working? Yes. So I want to try to talk to you a little bit about the impact of impaired brain energy metabolism, specifically glucose in this disease. Glucose is clearly the brain's main fuel. That's not in question. And what's uh, becoming apparent over the past decade or so is that the utilization of glucose by the brain as, as cognitive impairment develops is impaired. And one of the issues is um, that it's affecting cognitive function, it's affecting functional uh, outcomes, it's affecting the atrophy uh, and the number of cells in the brain. And one of the questions is, which is first? Is it a metabolic problem that's bringing on a functional problem, or is it a functional problem that's bringing on a metabolic problem? A related nutritional issue is, is the status of B vitamins uh, in, in uh, the risk of cognitive decline uh, and, and the development of, of some of the risk factors such as um, hyperhomocysteinemia. So as you are mostly, I'm sure, well aware, the incidence of dementia is still very, very important. It's an, a very significant public health issue. And what I want to emphasize here is the role that, that we might be able to have in, in slowing down that, that uh, the impact of Alzheimer's disease by addressing this issue of impaired glucose metabolism. It's particularly uh, seen in the posterior cingulate cortex, which is, and the parietal cortex, which is just above the ears, but also is affecting um, the temporal lobes, the hippocampus as well. And we will show you that there are some changes in the white matter. So white matter is often considered to be metabolically inert, but I'll show you that in fact uh, it's responding to the intervention that I, I want to describe to you. So the, the fundamental basis of my talk is, is right here on this slide, and we use PET imaging to acquire these images. Uh, on the, the left are six views of the brain. Um, in the control, CTL is healthy, normal controls, age matched for the MCI, which is mild cognitive impairment, the prodromal stage of Alzheimer's disease, or AD. So uh, although they're not a long, it's not a longitudinal study, you can see if you look down the panel on the left under glucose, that there is a very mild impairment in glucose uptake in the parietal cortex in MCI, which gets more severe as you get into Alzheimer's disease. This has been known and reported for 40 years. What we are able to do is to develop a ketone tracer as well and study in the same individuals within two hours of their brain glucose scan, they had a brain ketone scan. The, the, the intensity of the uptake marker here, it's much more green than, than it is yellow to orange, which is normal because ketones are, in, in people eating typical carbohydrate intake, three meals a day, ketones will only be supplying about three to five percent of the brain energy requirements. But notice that 
as you look from the healthy controls to the MCI to Alzheimer's disease, the color is not going down. In fact, in some individuals, it's actually going up, which is showing that the ability of the same area that's affected for glucose metabolism, the ability to take up ketones is not impaired, and in fact, in some individuals, it actually improves. So the cells that are struggling to metabolize glucose cannot be dead because they wouldn't be able to metabolize ketones. So this is the capacity of the brain to utilize these fuels. And it's partly, it, the way they're used is partly a function of the availability of those fuels. So if, if ketones are not a topic that's familiar to you, let me remind you that they are derived from our dietary fatty acids or from our stored fatty acids. The approach that we used uh, in, in the study I want to report to you is to use what's called the medium chain triglyceride or MCT which contains 8 and 10 carbon fatty acids and they are readily converted to uh, ketones. The two main ketones are shown um, side by side, acetoacetate and the dextro form of B, uh, beta hydroxybutyrate which are in equilibrium in the blood. The beta hydroxybutyrate is more stable so it's it's easier to measure, but uh, in fact, uh, it's, in, it's, it's acetoacetate, which is the form that is metabolized for energy. And in people on a ketogenic diet, you can measure breath acetone as, an out, as, a, as a measure of, of ketone status. So the trial that we did, we've called the Benefic trial. It was published, and I don't think there's any more data that's going to come out of it, but it was first published in 2020, 21, and 22. We had further reports. And the, basically, the design is shown here. Um, there's a pretreatment phase. There's some um, tests that we do, imaging, so multimodal imaging, the PET with FDG, the PET with ketones, functional imaging, diffusion imaging, the cognitive evaluation, and a metabolic assessment in the second phase of the study without doing the imaging. Then a six-month intervention with the oral nutritional supplement, and then the imaging in the first phase of the, of the project, the cognitive evaluation in both phases, and the metabolic evaluation in the second phase at the end of the intervention period. The oral nutritional supplement is either the active uh, brain energy, uh, brain expert uh, energy complex, which was consisted of uh, medium chain triglycerides, 15 grams given twice per day, so 30 grams per day, in, who, in whom uh, 39 people completed the trial, and a energy matched placebo containing um, oleic acid primarily as the energy match source for the placebo. Demographically, those on the placebo and on the active treatment were essentially identical. There's no significant difference in the number of men or women, APOE4 status, etc. They're also relatively well matched for BMI, blood pressure, and other cardio uh, cardiometabolic markers. They were mostly, but not all, um, uh, amnestic, had an amnestic component, so a memory issue in mild cognitive impairment. Not all of them, though. So this was a heterogeneous MCI group. By way of the metabolic results, the panel on the left is showing you that uh, an individual taking this ketogenic MCT drink for six months is capable of producing ketones at the end of that six-month period. You don't exhaust the ability of the body to produce ketones from MCT. Notice, of course, that the effect of ketosis is transient. So when you take this drink, three to four hours later, the ketones will have come back to normal. But during this period, around one hour after taking the drink, you can see that the ketone uptake by the brain is clearly uh, increased, uh, which doesn't change on the placebo treatment. So we have evidence that this oral nutritional supplement with KMCT uh, is a sustainable impact on ketones and raises brain ketone uptake, so it's improving brain energy status. The cognitive outcomes are clearly the bottom line in, in this study. It lasted for six months. Here I'll show you uh, three of those uh, memory domain of cognitive domains, episodic memory, executive function, and language. The free and cued recall test improved by one word out of 16 in the KMCT group, which is in blue. Verbal fluency actually deteriorated a little, a little bit on the placebo group, but improved in the uh, KMCT group. And the uh, Boston naming test also improved 
uh, on the um, KMCT group. Critically, we were able to combine these cognitive results with the brain energy metabolism at the same time. And what these curves are showing you is that there's a straight line relationship between the improvement in episodic memory, executive function, and language in relation to the level of ketones both in the blood and getting into the brain. I'm only showing the blood data here for those people that may be interested in doing this sort of work. Obviously, measuring the blood levels of ketones is a lot easier than uh, setting up a program to do it by PET imaging to look at the brain. And essentially, you get the same result anyway. It's, uh, so the, the blue spots are the active intervention, and they drift to the right uh, of, of zero, which would be no change. You can clearly see that some of those points overlap with the placebo. This was the first time we would had an opportunity to uh, use a KMCT supplement. We weren't sure how much to give, and so clearly those who had a higher ketone response did better on the cognitive outcomes, and if we could pull those two apart by having a more ketogenic supplement, that would be great, but this is, this is what you learn during research. Some of you will be interested in the uh, adverse effects. There were no serious adverse uh, events. Uh, the cardiometabolic and inflammatory markers are essentially unchanged. So ketones go up, clearly, that's a desirable outcome. Glucose, insulin, cholesterol are basically not changing when you look at the time by group interaction. The fatty acids in the MCT uh, treatment obviously increase in plasma, so that's uh, a desirable outcome, but nothing else changes. Um, and one of the inflammatory markers, IL-8, goes up a little bit uh, in, the, in, the, um, in the KMCT group. So this uh, is within a normal range, but it's this statistically significant increase. One of the factors that is important uh, that is not part of this study, but I'm showing in this slide, it's a separate study, but one of the factors that's important in, in assessing whether a ketogenic MCT is going to be beneficial is does, the question is, does it depend on carbohydrate intake? If you want to go into ketosis um, without using a KMCT, you need to reduce carbohydrate or total energy. If, you want, if you're using a ketogenic MCT here, you can see that it doesn't matter what your carbohydrate intake is. So there's no need to change the normal diet in an individual who's going to be using a ketogenic MCT. The other important point is, are older people as able to produce ketones from ketogenic MCT as younger ones are? And the answer is yes. Although the drift at, at eight hours is a little bit lower, statistically, these are the same. The difference between the peak here at the beginning and the peak at the end is that this one is taken with the meal and this one is done without a meal. So taking the ketogenic MCT with a meal is actually suppresses the ketogenic effect a little bit. Also, insulin is not affected by taking the ketogenic MCT, neither is the, uh, the plasma free fatty acid response. So I mentioned white matter and I'm uh, very proud of the work that I've been able to accomplish with my colleagues in imaging. This is the first image that I think anyone has, has uh, sh been able to show of the utilization of ketone bodies by the white matter tracts in the brain. And on the left, you see before the treatment with the ketogenic MCT, the color is lower on this color scale. Um, and when you give the ketogenic MCT, so the post-treatment, you see it go towards the orange um, and, and even darker towards the endings where the white matter tracks go into the cortical layers. So this uh, is, is a new field of research and, and what the, um, these parameters around the white matter tracks appear to be suggest, but I put a, an, a, a question mark on it, it appears to be associated with improved myelin integrity, but this is an evolving field, and we'll see whether that uh, it is, is actually the case. The other aspect of the imaging that we did uh, was to look at functional MR results, so the, uh, the networks in the brain, and there are eight uh, brains that are shown on the left here in color. It's the top left one, the DAN, which is the dorsal attention network, which is the one that changed. It's here on the left, on this, um, this bar graph, um, the most common functional network is over here on, on the right, the uh, DMN, which is the default mode network. 
There's no significant change in these other networks, but there is in this uh, default mode network. And so I'll just show you the results that we published on that this year. Again, it's uh, a novel approach in imaging to combine what you can see by functional magnetic resonance imaging, which is the, the row on top here in red, with the, uh, the ketone uptake by the PET imaging, and then overlay those values and look at the relationship between the ketone metabolism in this specific network. And what we see is that the functional connectivity within this network, within this red zone, is directly related to the availability of ketones getting into the brain, into this specific network. Furthermore, that functional connectivity improvement that we see due to the ketones is directly associated with improved attention and processing speed, the, both the composite score and two of the individual tests, the trail making test uh, in terms of the scanning speed or the sequencing speed. So this is a negative relationship because these, the middle panel B and C are both functions of time. So less time taken to tr complete the trail making test is associated with better functional connectivity in this network. So we're seeing a relationship between the five major cognitive domains and ketone uptake in the brain for episodic memory, executive function, and language as a global effect. And when we look at the white matter, we see it with processing speed. And when we look at the functional imaging in the dorsal attention network, we can see that attention is also, in fact, improving once we um, dissect these uh, components of, of brain functionality. So if we think about this in a schematic sense, uh, I think it's a, a realistic uh, model, basically, is that the brain is like a hybrid car. And the hybrid car is not working as well as we get older, mainly because the glucose metabolism in those with mild cognitive impairment is starting to decline. So it's around a 10% decline in mild cognitive impairment, and at the start of Alzheimer's disease, it's up to 20% and gets worse. So that side is not working well. And the transfer, this arrow, this metabolic switching between glucose and ketones, which should be happening during the night, should be happening if between meals, is not working very effectively. Nevertheless, if we can supply ketones, we can increase their contribution to help compensate for the glucose deficit because ketone metabolism in the brain does not seem to be defective, even in moderately advanced Alzheimer's disease. So we can uh, sort of exogenously bypass this problem with the metabolic switch and compensate for the uh, brain energy gap that's caused by the glucose deficit. So by way of take home messages, uh, what I'm saying here is that if we can get an alternative source of energy into the brain, it looks like we can compensate for the metabolic defect in patients with MCI. And that, that the, the approach we've taken with this intervention is to use a specific oral nutritional supplement uh, with ketogenic MCT, which is, is now called Brain Expert. And that this improved energy status in the brain is directly related to improved cognitive outcomes. So the two are intimately related in this early stage of the disease where the, the cognitive deficit is not very great. So you still have an opportunity to make a metabolic and cognitive improvement. And for those of you who would like to read up on, on these uh, resources for um, to better understand brain energy metabolism and other aspects of nutrition in mild cognitive impairment, please use these, these tools. Thank you very much for your time.